I think he's near. Hey, what's up? It's Caleb with Curious Refuge, and in this video, I'm really excited to show you how to extract the most cinematic quality from Pika Labs. There's been some incredible innovations with the tool, and the results we're getting are kind of borderline cinematic, so let's hop in. So the first step in order to get a cinematic result is to input a cinematic image. And for images, I like to use Midjourney. I feel like it produces the best results at this point. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the nitty gritty details about how I get cinematic images inside of Midjourney. I talk a lot more about that in our cinematography course, but specifically, if you type in a cinematic still and then talk about the type of composition or what you wanna see in your frame, you can also reinforce it with things like the lens that is used, uh, 32K, 8K, things like that and talk about the color grading, it will generally push your image in a cinematic direction depending on your own creative vision. So that's exactly what I did for our example. And when you're working with Midjourney specifically, always make sure that you open in the browser. When you don't open in the browser, you actually get less resolution. So make sure you go to the browser and then save that image. Great, now that we have the image in hand, let's go over to Pika Labs. So again, Pika is inside of Discord. If you haven't joined the Pika Discord server, you'll find a link below this video. In order to convert an image into video using Pika Labs, you can just go to any of the generate channels. I'll just pick number six here and you type in forward slash and create. So now you can prompt and direct what you want to see. What I like doing is actually uploading my image first. So I'll go to plus one more here and select image. And now all you have to do is simply drag and drop your image into this window. For our example here, I'm actually going to be using this image of a man looking to the left. His hair is kind of blowing in the breeze. So let's see what we get. So I'll grab the image and drop him right there. Cool. So now we'll go to prompt here and let's type in the actual action that we want to see. So for this image, because it's a man looking off to the right, it's very dramatic, right? I think I definitely want to have this shot be in a slow motion. So I'm going to type in slow motion. And I also think I want his hair to be blowing. So I'm going to say hair blowing. And maybe we want the clouds in the background to just have like slight movement. So I'm going to say slight cloud movement in the background. Cool. That might be enough. Of course, we could go in and prompt further. Also keep in mind that there are limitations related to the uh, movement. And sometimes if you have too much movement, it can get really distorted. That's just one of the limitations of working with uh, AI tools at the moment. So in addition to the actual movement that we want to see, we also can prompt in a few other things. So for example, we could change the frames per second. If we did dash FPS, we could type in a number, but by default, it gives us 24 frames per second, which is the uh, frames per second needed to create films. So that's totally fine. We don't have to type in anything there. Now you also can direct camera movement and that's very important because it allows you to essentially be a cinematographer creating your scenes here. So in order to do that, you type in dash camera and you can start to add in multiple commands. I'll put a list of commands below this video, but for our example, I think I want the camera to pan to the right. So I'm going to type in pan and then right. Now, in addition to right, you can also say pan left, pan up, pan down, and then you could also do combinations. So you could do pan right and then up, or pan left and down. You can put in any combination that you want. You also can direct uh, the zoom. So we could say camera zoom, and then we could say in or out. So zoom in, zoom out, it's completely up to you. And then you also have the ability to rotate as well. So you can type in camera, rotate, and then, you know, say, clockwise, counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. You can also do uh, CW, CCW, and ACW in order to do that. So for our specific use case here, I'll say camera pan right. So I want the camera to go from left to right to get the finish uh, result. And before we click render here, so I totally could render this right now and it probably would give us something pretty good, but I've actually found that if you wanna get maximum cinematic quality, you actually need to do dash and then neg, and this is going to create a negative prompt. So essentially what's gonna happen now is 
anything I type in, it will try to remove that from the final result. Now, of course, there are things that we don't want to see like blurriness or distortion. I actually have a list of tags that I like throwing into every single prompt inside of Pika just to kind of keep it uh, consistently higher quality. And you'll find those below this video. You can just copy, paste them, you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste those into our prompt window here. You can see we have words like noisy, bad quality, distorted. We don't wanna see that stuff in this scene. We want it to be as cinematic as possible. So when you're ready, go ahead and click enter. And now we simply have to wait on Pika to get done processing this video. It takes about 30 seconds, it's pretty fast, but while we wait, I want to let you know about our AI filmmaking course at Curious Refuge. The truth is the creative landscape is changing and these new tools empower everyone, people like you to create your own films from scratch. So our course will show you how to create your own AI films using the latest techniques. We keep it updated and we have hundreds of artists that have gone through the program and they've created some incredible results. All right, let's see what Pika gave us. So we have the video here and he's looking off into the distance. His hair is waving. It looks pretty good. Honestly, the result's not too shabby. Of course, if you didn't like the result, you could simply hit this refresh wheel here and it will run the prompt again. And if you wanted to change your prompt and change the direction that you're inputting into Pika, you just hit the shuffle button here. And when you click on that, it pops open the window and you can just change uh, whatever prompts you want to and then resubmit it and it'll run it again. It's super helpful because you don't have to re-upload the image each time. I'm going to say that I like this video, so all I'm going to do is hit download. Okay, so this is the result we have from Pika and you can see that it looks pretty darn cinematic. I think Pika did an amazing job. So let's address the watermark elephant in the room. How do we get rid of this watermark? Because right now Pika videos always come with that watermark. Well, in order to remove that watermark, we're going to use a tool called Wondershare Pixie Cut. And essentially, uh, all you have to do is click on the Remove Watermark button here and upload your footage. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop our footage that we downloaded from Pika. And whenever it pops up here, you'll see that you have essentially a brush and we can just brush over the Pika Labs text just like this. Now, is this tool absolutely perfect 100% of the time? No. And when you're done with that, you can go to remove objects now. Now it does cost money to use this tool, so you don't necessarily have to go through this step. I'm gonna show you how to extract maximum cinematic quality. Even if you decide to leave that watermark in, it's totally up to you. So this is our result from Wondershare. You can see that uh, the watermark is removed from the corner. Now, obviously there's a little bit of warping on his sleeve there. You could rerun it if you wanted to, but for our specific use case, I'm gonna say that this is okay. So now we wanna get maximum cinematic quality because right now it's a little fuzzy. It might look good on a phone, but it definitely wouldn't look great if you really expanded it. And the tool that I'm going to use is called Topaz Video AI. If you watched our cinematic runway video, then you know I'm a huge fan of using Topaz to always do a final quality pass on my videos. If you don't have Topaz Video AI, I really recommend it. You click the link below this video to snag your copy. So I'm inside Topaz video and I'm going to drag and drop our footage. So our footage is now inside of the tool and let's start by adjusting our settings here. So under output, we want it to be much larger, right? 576 pixels, that's less than HD. So let's go ahead and expand that to a usable format. So what I always like to tell people is whenever you are working on a project like this, always try to get more resolution than what you are trying to export. So, so if you're working on an HD project, up-res your footage to 4K so you can scale it down. If you're working on a 4K project, maybe you up-res to 6K. You always want more resolution so you can scale it down and just get maximum quality from this tool. So in our instance, I'm going to export it as a 4K video. And for the frames per second, just make sure that it's set to 24. That is the original frames per second, but just double check that that is set. And when you scrub down here, you don't have to select stabilization, motion de-blur, or frame interpolation, which is actually a notable improvement from our runway video where we actually have to convert their eight frames per second video into 24 frames per second. So it's pretty cool that we get to skip that step. And under the AI model, make sure that it's set to the Proteus model. I've tested all of the models and I continually test them. And Proteus is still the best, which is awesome because it's also the easiest to use. 
And for your output settings, you can pick whatever makes sense for your machine. If you're working on a project that you're trying to get maximum resolution, go with ProRes. Uh, but you know, the H.265 main or H.264 high quality, if uh, storage size is a problem on your machine, you could select that as well. But we'll do ProRes 422 for our example. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit the export button. Okay, so let's preview our final result here. Let's go ahead and play this back. And you can see that it looks pretty dang good that we're getting some resolution in the, the hair, the individual hairs in his beard. Uh, his clothing has texture and the bokeh in the background looks incredibly realistic. Now, obviously there are areas to improve with the AI, but it's getting pretty darn cinematic considering these tools have only been around for a few months now. So there you go. That's how you get maximum cinematic quality from using Pika Labs. I definitely recommend playing around with the different camera tools to move the cameras in and out. And you can go in and adjust the motion settings, work with different props to try to get the best cinematic result for each individual shot. If you ever create an awesome AI project, be sure to tag us on social media at Curious Refuge. And of course, like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on the latest AI filmmaking trends and techniques. My name's Caleb. Thank you so much for watching.